Hi everyone, TJ from Avid here, and we are back to take you on a tour of Mbox Studio and to show you how you can set it up to work with all your own personal preferences and workflow. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. So first, let's look at the unit and go through all the connections. Starting with these analog inputs, you have inputs one and two on the front of the unit. These are XLR quarter inch combo jacks that are switchable between mic, line level, and instrument inputs. On the top right of the back of the unit, you have analog inputs three and four. These combo XLR quarter inch jacks are switchable between mic and line level inputs. All four mic inputs and the two instrument inputs also have variable Z. This allows you to switch between different impedance settings to best match the type of process the input will be feeding or just to get a certain color or feel. We're gonna go over this in more detail in a separate video. Next on the back, there are analog line inputs five and six. And after that, you have two effects loops with quarter inch sends and returns. These can be used to incorporate external outboard gear as well as switchable to high Z for using guitar pedals, something that we're gonna check out in a later video. There's also a high Z output on the front of the interface to send to a guitar amp for any reamping workflows. A quick note, the reamp output and effect send two are a shared output. We're gonna get into more detail on using these in a separate video. For analog monitoring outputs, you have two stereo quarter inch pairs of monitor outs for your main and alt control room monitors. On the right front of the unit, there are two independent stereo headphone outputs with digital level controls. And rounding out the analog connectivity is a built-in talkback mic on the top of the interface. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the digital connectivity. There are coax SPDIF input and output connections on RCA jacks. Next to those, you have optical input and output connections that can be switched between either optical SPDIF or ADAT formats. Note that when using optical SPDIF, this will mirror the coax SPDIF connection. All this connectivity gives you access to a total of 21 inputs and 22 outputs with eight internal software inputs that are accessible from Pro Tools or other computer software applications. Each of the hardware and software inputs have access to the Mbox Studio's built-in effects and EQ, as well as a comprehensive mixer for flexible low latency monitoring during recording. All of this is accessed via Mbox Control, which is a separate Mac or Windows application that lets you set up and control this functionality. We are definitely gonna go over this in more detail in an upcoming video. There are also control connections on the unit. There are five pin MIDI input and output jacks that act as a MIDI interface when Mbox Studio is connected to your computer. This is for connecting external MIDI equipment to the interface. And there are two quarter inch jacks that can be configured to use with either on off or momentary switches to control functions within the interface or connected software, or with expression pedals to control MIDI parameters of connected effects or plugins. To get up and running with Mbox Studio, first, choose the correct regional plug adapter for the included power supply. Connect the barrel of the power supply to the 12 volt DC jack on the back of the interface and plug the power supply into an electrical outlet. Next, connect the supplied USB-C cable to the USB jack on the back of the interface and connect the other end of the cable to your Mac or Windows computer. If you do not have a USB-C connection on your computer, make sure to use the supplied USB-C to USB-A adapter. Press and hold the power switch and Mbox will power on. With the unit now powered on, you will see the front panel illuminated. The left side of the interface accesses all the input controls, and the right side accesses the monitor and headphone outputs. On the input side, the large left encoder controls selecting the inputs and setting their levels. Press the encoder to switch between the six analog inputs. 
you'll see the numbers over the input meters light up green to indicate the current input being accessed. With an input selected, the encoder can now be used to set the desired input level, with its level setting on the LED bar above. If you need to control a stereo pair of inputs, use the link switch to enable odd even input pairs together. The type of input can be selected with the input switch, allowing you to select mic, line, or instrument for each input. For mic inputs with XLR cables connected, you can use the 48 volt switch to turn on phantom power for a condenser microphone. A negative 10 dB pad can be activated with the pad switch, and for the mic and instrument inputs, the Z switch lets you cycle through different variable Z settings, each with a specific color to indicate which value is active. The six nine segment LED meters will show the incoming input level for each of the six main analog inputs. On the output side, the large right encoder controls the selected control room monitor outputs level. Press this encoder to switch between the different active monitor output paths. These include the main monitor output, the alt monitor output, the digital monitor output if it's set up, and Bluetooth monitor, which we're going to talk more about in a minute. The outputs show up illuminated to indicate that they are connected and ready to use, and the active monitor's name and level indication bar are shown in color. The monitor outputs have independent levels by default, but you can use the link switch to keep all the different monitors set to the same level. There are also switches to mute and dim the monitor outputs, as well as a mono switch. The two encoders on the right front of the unit control the two independent headphone outputs. And the front panel talkback mic can be engaged from either the talkback switch or with one of the assignable switch jacks on the back of the panel. These can also be assigned to work as other momentary or on-off type functions or be assigned to an expression pedal to control MIDI or plug-in parameters. Just to the left of the monitor switch controls, Stereo 9 segment LED meters show you the output level of your DAW's mixer. Now there are two independent Bluetooth modules in Mbox Studio. One for connecting Bluetooth sources, such as phones, tablets, etc., and one for connecting Bluetooth destinations like AirPods, Bluetooth speakers, headphones, or even a car stereo if you're parked close enough to the unit. To pair with the Bluetooth input module, Press and hold the Bluetooth switch on the input side until the light starts flashing. On the device you want to connect to, go to its Bluetooth settings and select the Mbox device. Once the two devices are paired, the Bluetooth switch will glow solid blue. To pair a device with the Bluetooth output, press and hold the Bluetooth switch on the output side until the light starts flashing. Put your Bluetooth device into pairing mode and the two devices should pair. Once the Bluetooth output has an active destination, Bluetooth becomes a selectable monitor output destination. The switch with the Mbox logo gives you access to the Mbox control software. Once the Mbox control software is installed on the connected computer, pressing this switch will open and close the Mbox control software, giving you instant access to all the extra features and preferences of the interface. Below this switch is the tune button, that will give you access to the built-in tuner that can be used with either the two instrument inputs or the built-in talkback mic. The input meters will show the note of the input, and input level control meter shows if the note is sharp, flat, or in tune. And the four multicolored switches below the meters are user-assignable action buttons that can access several different functions of the interface. With the interface now connected to the computer, Open up Pro Tools. And from the Setup menu, open up Playback Engine. Under the Device section, click the Reveal triangle and select Avid Mbox Studio from the list of available audio interfaces for your computer. Click OK and your Mbox Studio is now ready to be used in Pro Tools. To check the I.O. settings, go to I.O. under your Setup menu. 
Under the Input tab, you'll see all your available MBox Studio inputs named and ready to go. Note that the TalkBack mic is an assignable input in the I.O. settings and can be used to record onto a track in Pro Tools if you want. The Output tab shows the four stereo pairs of MBox Studio internal outputs. We're going to talk more about those in an upcoming video. For now, just know that MBox Studio Internal 1.2 is your stereo output from your Pro Tools tracks. You also have 12 stereo default buses created, along with access to four stereo hardware inserts. More explanation on these in future videos, but for now, Press OK, and we are ready to start recording and creating with MBox Studio. So that is your tour of all the I.O. and controls in MBox Studio. In our next video, we're going to check out MBox Control, which is the software application that allows you even deeper integration and setup within your MBox. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you on the next one.